Vroom, vroom, vroom. So, so, let's say welcome to our tractor video. We got this, this tractor here, from a really considerate neighbor that thought we might be able to improve it because it was dead. He couldn't get it to work, the batteries were dead, so we thought it would just be a quick battery change, but what? it wasn't. No. It was more. It was more. For electric versus gas tractor video. How about that? Yeah. All right, electric versus gas. In this video, we'll go over what's involved in retrofitting this Ryobi electric lawnmower and making it run again. Also, what kind of performance results can we get? What are the stats looking like? What if I told you that once these guys are done, you would be able to mow a suburban lawn all summer on only one charge? But yeah, let's get into it. What are you driving? Well, you might be surprised, but this is an electric one. I can reach the pedal. And I'm driving a gas Cub Cadet. This is my OV. Both of these are 2018 models. Blade size you mean the, the deck? deck? The deck size. I think 38 inches. What size is this one? You know? So 38 inches. 46 over here. Yeah. Quite a bit different. This is a Ryobi RM480EX. My neighbor had this and he was gonna get rid of it because he had a new one and he had a bunch of dead lead acid batteries inside. So we cleaned it up and got rid of the batteries. And so now we're trying to figure out how we put this brand new 51.2 volt lead time golf cart battery in here. And that battery is gonna go in this area and this thing is where the other batteries were. 5.4. So it's in shut off mode right now. So you can turn it on, go ahead. See, there you go. Yep, 52.4. We are at approximately 30 to 40% probably. Okay, good. There's no connections on the inside of this. All these blue ones, those are all the battery cells. So this is the BMS here. This is the battery management system. Yeah. Okay. So this battery is a much, much larger battery. At least because it's only one battery, you don't have to connect it in series. It just connects right easily to the main thing. So this particular model, the RM480EX is a good choice for a conversion because it previously held really heavy lead acid batteries so it has the steel frame to support the weight. Now we're putting in a lithium iron phosphate battery which is much more efficient. The other thing is unlike modern mowers with proprietary battery packs or over the air connections slash updates, this one allows any 48 volt battery setup so you can retrofit it easily. So we have the connector from the previous setup, which is basically a fuse on here, and the battery terminals. And this is on an Anderson connector, and it's going to connect right to the existing system, so it is not a lot to change. Right now the goal is to figure out how to mount this in here. This is only a 38-inch deck, but it's quiet and all that kind of stuff. The motors on here for the blades are running they're DC, so they run right off the battery. Those guys are running uh, right from a 48 volt, so they're DC. No belts, no nothing. If you've ever dealt with the belts, I've dealt with drive belts and deck belts, they're very annoying to deal with, especially the drive belts. Obviously the big flaw in this thing to begin with was that it came with lead acid batteries. Now we're gonna take care of that. When you take out those lead acid batteries, I use the jack to support that situation so that the batteries wouldn't fall out or flip out. This battery is much lighter than the four of those other ones, but it's still pretty heavy. And this one, does it hurt your ears when this one starts? No. Why not? I'm sure we start it up. Go ahead, start yours up. Oh my God, it's, it's on. <laughs> That's it? Just a click? Yeah. Wow. You want to hear what this one sounds like? Okay, let's turn this um, one on. I'm just Many 
new 80 volt commercial riding mowers like Ryobi and Ego use NMC lithium ion batteries. These are energy dense but prone to issues. They don't like deep discharges or cold temperatures which can lead to BMS lockouts, melted connectors and pack failure after just a few seasons. That's why they really need to be stored in a temperature controlled space, especially in the winter. We're switching to a lithium iron phosphate battery instead. Uh, it handles deep discharge better, stores well in the off season and is more thermally stable. While it is heavier and less energy dense, it offers better cold weather performance, longer life and less risk of thermal runaway with the right BMS in place. We need to do two things with this. First of all, so first step here is connecting the battery and testing everything out. Initially, we thought the battery was the main issue, and it certainly was one of the issues, but not the only one. Once installed, we turned the tractor on, it would be very, very jerky and not run smoothly. So obviously, there was something else going on as well. When we were having the first problems with this, we had the hesitation in the motor. Where, or it wasn't working at all. And so the first thing I did is check near the pedal, this part here. And that basically is a potentiometer that when you move the accelerator, so basically what this does is it tells the motor controller how much you want to accelerate. So I took it off, tested it, and everything seemed okay. So I was getting from basically zero to four volts or five volts or whatever it was, but it was basically within line with normal. So it wasn't that. So then we basically were limited to, it was either the motor controller or it was the motor itself. So I tested the motor controller well, it'll be interesting to see if there's anything obviously wrong with this. And that was putting out some weird signals, so uh, we bought a new one. So we checked out the pedal potentiometer, yeah. right? And that was fine. I'm, and then the I'm only turning a pedal potentiometer. Yeah. And then the only other thing we checked was the, or the only other thing it could be, was the motor controller. So we bought a motor controller and installed that. And then we put the, the new golf cart battery in. And what? It was perfect. Yeah. That's what that was fine. Now in terms of the battery system here, uh, we're also using a monitor. This is part of the lead time system. So the monitor will let you know what's going on with the battery. We're also going to use their charger. So all in all, the battery, the monitor, and the, the charger, uh, which provides quite a nice package. Everything works together very well. A light. Okay, so it's reading the amps. So 30 amps coming in. 24.54.7 volts and 1600 watts coming in. So that's pretty awesome. The other thing to replace was the blades for cutting the grass. Notice the 2x4 or the board that uh, rests against the blades when you're removing it. And I got these little arrow indicators so you can't really make a mistake on this. So what have we done on this one? Do you remember? So we changed the driving belt. The deck belt, yeah. The deck belt tw twice. The blades. The driving belt once. The blades multiple times. We've done oil changes, front tire changes. Um, oil changes, oil I wouldn't changes. say, are difficult. No, no, they're not difficult, but you still gotta do it. So on yeah. this one, you don't have any of that, right? Yeah, you just charge up a battery. Now, the battery came with brackets, uh, but we ended up securing it in place by bracing 2x4s uh, to create a snug place for it. 
And this worked out really great. Do you like this type of battery? I love it! Is it easy to charge up? Yeah! Is it fast or slow to charge? Um, it depends on how down it is. Charging port, main battery connect. So in this situation we're going to avoid using this because the wiring on this is made for 15 amps but the wiring on the one we want to use it needs to be for 30 amps so like a 10 gauge wire the lead time can put out 30 amps that's about 1500 watts compared to the old Ryobi charger which is I think half that so we made it so you can basically have a cap on here I plugged this up with hot glue and so this you just pull this off and you can charge it up and otherwise it protects it from water okay now we have the battery monitor coming out of this thing too so there's a wire for the battery monitor that we routed up through the seat here temporarily we're just trying to decide where to route this battery monitor and now this one is a larger that could fit in the standard area here so in this state currently it has most of the panels off so we could get to everything and now we're thinking about here for the battery monitor to route the wire up and come up on the steering wheel so you can see the battery information all the time. Anyway, that's basically that's where we are. So right now we just got in the battery and we jammed it in there with a bunch of blocks of wood which fit pretty perfectly so that thing is not coming out. So already we've been doing tests for, I don't know, a couple days now and we've been driving it a lot as well as cutting the long and we're basically down to 60% or so. Right here in the charging port is where you could theoretically charge this if you were using a lighter charger or more similar to the one that came with the Ryobi but we want to use the better one. Now this is a 5000 watt hour battery now we have to route that line up to the steering wheel and then close this thing up. The last thing I have to do is turn the battery on the only way you can reach that battery is to actually move it out. Yeah. So let me do that right now and turn it on. Black to black, red to red. Okay. The battery monitor should work now. Would you turn that off for me? It Good. does work. Good. Okay, I hear it. Okay, it says we're pulling in 30 amps. And this thing's pulling out 1,750 watts. And this thing is getting in 1,651. Well, I'd say that's working out pretty good. It's nice having a 30 amp charger when you can do it like this. Do it again. There you go. Let's just make sure there's no interference with the wire. I think we're good. Wow, that was a lot of stuff we just went through. For this. <laughs> you like doing this stuff, huh? Yeah. Okay. Nice and tight. But it's coming out already. That's okay. This is just reading what's from the computer, the BMS, the battery management system that's in the, in this. But look at that, it's cool, it works. So we took the battery monitor cable and we fished it around the whole setup here and came underneath, and these red ties are holding it, and we fished it up all the way through the steering column and we had to make a couple holes in here and we have the exit hole here and then we have the battery monitor right on the steering wheel. So that's awesome. So now you can easily see it. So now the old battery monitor, which is for the lead acid, is right here. So that's working pretty good here. The next step after this is to get all the body panels on. We've got the deck fixed, new blades on. We've got the new motor controller.
We also lowered the uh, sound of that nonsense because okay. it was super loud. If you've ever driven one of these, you know just how much fun it is. They're quite fast and uh, when you're not cutting the grass, it is very quiet. Uh, and you have like really great clearance, you can drive around corners really fast. When you engage the cutters, it's a little bit louder. But overall, of course, it's a lot quieter than the gas mower. So after riding around and you know you want to charge it, you just fold the seat over and connect it. With this charger, we can add about 1.5 kilowatts per hour. That means that a dead battery would take about three and a half hours to charge. Another way to look at it is that in a mere 45 minutes, you can get enough charge to do almost an acre and a half. Even at 20 cents per kilowatt hours, you can cut your one acre lawn for 20 cents. Now, considering most suburban lawns are a lot smaller than one acre, even on just one charge, you should be able to comfortably mow your lawn all summer. Now we're going to try to get the box on, get the camera on top of it. Let's just give a little test here. And we want to record the screen as it, as it does it the whole time, right? Yeah, it is going to be a little bit tricky actually because this is, this is, I wasn't expecting this to be around here in the same way. So let's try to tape this around here. I Hold the camera right there. Okay, let's see if this works. Yesterday we cut this grass, which took a little over an hour, straight the whole time it did the entire lawn, it only used 21% of the whole battery. Yeah. So it went from 100 to 79%. And we recorded that screen the whole Actually, time. Yes. The blades were on the entire time, and it was moving the entire time. Yeah. That cool. means it could do probably about five acres. Yeah. With the blades on. With the blades on, yeah. Now we could probably drive, I don't know, like 40 miles? Yeah, so how much more power is it using when it cuts compared to it's just driving? Um, the most, okay, the most power I pulled in the whole time was 3,000 watts was the most. Yeah. It was when I was going the fastest I could, slightly up a hill, wow. with the blades on. Yeah. Okay. Every other time it was pulling much less. When you slow down, it actually recharges oh, a yeah. battery. It's got regenerative kind of movement. Yeah. The, the, the motor gets charged up. So that's kind of cool. Do you recommend people do a battery change like this? Is it difficult to do? Yeah. It's difficult to do? Or well, you recommend it? I recommend it. You recommend it. Is it difficult to do? Just a tiny bit. I'll be driving off. <laughs> Why don't I just walk out of the picture? Why don't I just walk out of the picture? Goodbye.